What is up guys, this is TCG Sam here, and in today's video, I'm coming at you guys with my first ever Locals feature match, so I do apologize in advance for like the poor angle, and if there are technical er like uh, difficulties in between, that's my first time filming this, but I really wanted to get this feature match out. So that's me on the left, uh, with the TCG Sam sleeves obviously, I'm playing Virtual World, and we're going up against Invoke Dogmatica DPE. You can see we're about to lose the tie roll because our opponent rolls an 11, but that's okay. We can show that Virtual Worlds can't go second as well. So, starting it off, we are going to be going second, and our opponent, I think he's just going to start with a single copy of Fusion Destiny. Fusion Destiny, while it's a very good card alone, it just kind of telegraphs that his hand isn't the best. But I mean, even then, Fusion Destiny is just such an insane card. He has a recurring, like, pop every turn. An insane follow up with the Celestial in the graveyard. So, summons Destroy Phoenix Enforcer, uh, sets three back row, and ends his turn. We draw for turn, and I'm contemplating what his back row could be at this moment. Uh, I start with King Long. Uh, King, I, st I love starting with King Long because uh, your opponent's pretty much never going to pop it because if they pop it, you just get so much value in the grave. And the way I'm, what I'm going to be doing here is sending Sean Wu. Sean Wu uh, against the Destroy Phoenix Enforcer is very important because once he pops your guy, you're able to still. Put another monster back on the board so you can play. Next, I have to activate Lulu targeting the Qinglong, and I reason that this is okay if he pops the Qinglong and I lose the Lulu target, just because I can still normal it and I get a Qinglong into the graveyard, which is exactly what I'm trying to do anyways, um, because Lulu's just gonna be searching me another name, which is getting Qinglong into the graveyard. But he has the Ash Blossom, and we chain the Call by the Grave. So luckily, we do have that one of Call by the Grave. Um, so it makes him contemplate if he wants to use the Destroy Phoenix Enforcer instead. And it's honestly a tough choice because if he lets it go, then like I'm just able to uh, I'm just able to get so much advantage. But I'm able to chain Forbidden Chalice and just stop the Destroy Phoenix Enforcer. So our entire combo is pretty much resolving here. Uh, Forbidden Chalice is just honestly such a great card uh, in the Virtual World deck, just because it stops things like Shureg, it stops things like Destroy Phoenix Enforcer, while you have monsters on the board already, where things like Imper may not necessarily stop it right away. So we're gonna dump Chuche. To add GG to our hand, uh, it's okay if we don't have the Chuche in hand, although I do believe we do. We do have one since we're trying to just break our opponent's board at this point. Uh, we summon out the, the GG by setting the spell. Nian Nian comes out since level 3 was summoned. And from here, I'm contemplating how to play through his back row. At this point, I'm aware he's on Destroy Phoenix, like Invoke Deep E, so I figured there may be like an impermanence or something in there. Um, but I apologize for the glare, that's also Star's Charge Warrior. We draw a card, just giving us the extra card advantage so we can use with Sean Wu or the Qinglong later on. But first, we overlay into a Fan Fan. Fan Fan, um, I probably shouldn't have done this because I know I needed to bait out his back row first. And Fan Fan is one of the best ways uh, to like take away all his follow-up with DP and his Celestial. So we definitely shouldn't have started with Fan Fan. But it is not a big deal because we get to add Lao Lao, uh, the Ditch GG on Resolution off of the Qinglong. Uh, Lao Lao is just going to get us so much advantage as well, we're just going to make another uh, XYZ or Synchro. Targeting the spell, this time we're able to send Tutu uh, to summon back a copy of our uh, Lili, I believe I'm contemplating. Uh, you gotta remember that Nian Nian's a tuner, so that does make some plays more interesting. Uh, I, I think I ultimately decide to bring back the the Lili just for the extra for the extra uh, way to get rid of the DP with like XYZ because all my all the synchro outs are like destroying but uh, I actually end up uh, bringing GG I think the reason for that is I'm trying to make another level 6 synchro in Juju since I have a bunch of extra types in my graveyard I'm trying to force out uh, another one of his back row which my read on it was it was just a bunch of impermanences or chalice or or something or cross out his data or something I figured he'd have at least one more uh, way to actually negate my monsters uh, so that's why I'm trying to, um, that's why I decided to go for Juju to force it out again. Because after Juju, I could still make another thing to out the Destroy Phoenix Enforcer. And this is where summoning FanFan first kind of bites me uh, in the rear end. Because FanFan would have been so good to finish off of, just banishing his entire follow-up after baiting out his entire back row. But unfortunately, we didn't play that in incredibly well. So it's not going to be, so we're not going to have access to that. We're going to have to think of another way to uh, get rid of his... Uh, Celestial and Graves. So, just a tip for you Virtual World players, keep Fan Fan until like the very last thing that you're doing. Uh, just because it outs DP and all the follow-up it gives. So now we force out another Chalice, and then from here, I'm I'm able to lower the level of uh, Lao Lao by 3 to make a Shen Shen. This is our, pretty much our final way to out DP without destroying it. 
Uh, we destroy by battle. Uh, you get Spanish because Shenshen, and Shenshen returns the Nian Nian to the graveyard, which is fine because we have four banished anyways. Main phase two, we're able to make our copy of Divine Arsenal Double A Zeus, set a copy of Chuche, I believe, and then proceeding to end phase, uh, since we resolved the GG, we're able to add back Lulu to our hand. Passing it over to our opponent, uh, who's gonna draw, and he remember he has a Celestial Engraved. That's a very powerful uh, follow up uh, that we ha we sh probably should have been able to deal with had we saved the fan fan for last, because I could have just made an M7 or something to force out the Destroy Phoenix Enforcer before. But anyways, we're still in a pretty good position here. We have a Chuche, plus a Shenshen, and a Zeus, and with a lot of follow-up in the graveyard, so it's going to be a very uphill battle for our opponent, uh, just because of how powerful our uh, follow-up is. Call by the Grave is okay, he's just getting emptying his hand for uh, the Celestial draw. Celestial draws two cards. Is he able to draw anything? Thinks about it, and then concedes. So we take down game one. Uh, even though we did misplay a little bit, uh, it like we weren't and we didn't end up getting punished too hard for it. Uh, we were still able to take it down just because of how powerful our beginning hand to begin with was. That's that call of the grave was really really clutch. And here I apologize. Uh, I didn't realize every time I like put my hands on the table, it like shook the table and the camera started tilting downwards. So the angle just kept getting worse and worse. And I do apologize for that. But Anyways, we're moving on into game two now. Uh, I'm assuming he's going to be going first, uh, and I side accordingly against this, like, the DP. Like, honestly, I, might, I think I only put in uh, back removal just to get rid of his, like, uh, his schisms and his uh, and his dogmatic punishments because those cards hurt me a lot. I think I, 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 main I was main decking Dark Ruler in, in this build and Forbidden Chalice. So I decide I'm probably going to keep those because those deal with Mechaba and Destroy Phoenix Enforcer. And I probably only really care about his back row after that. So I think I just sided in a back removal like Red Reboot and uh, Harpy's Feather Duster. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's I pretty much have like a set side decking formula. I uh, If you guys haven't checked it out already, I have uploaded a video on how I side with Virtual Worlds. Like, uh, all, even though the side deck may differ slightly, the idea is the same. I want to. You want to uh, always like set out those cards that uh, don't really aren't like the best going second. So like Fool's Barrel Goods, I tend to side out because we're drawing a sixth card that kind of alleviates the consistency issue. Um, but yeah, we we finish siding. We shuffle up for game number two, and uh, I do believe yeah we are going second in this one. Obviously, <laughs> there's no reason for him to make us go first if we go first. Uh, Shenzhen is pretty strong against his like invoked engine. And we, he just probably doesn't want us to to make invoke uh, to make his invoked engine like a lot worse. So, starting off, um, we draw our opening hands. Opponent's gonna start with Alistair. Alistair is good. Uh, in this build of Virtual Worlds, I was not playing any hand traps whatsoever. Uh, so all of, all of his plays are pretty much gonna resolve. Starts with, activates Meltdown afterwards. Uh, Meltdown is gonna search uh, the Alistair. Another copy of Alistair uh, as a follow up, I suppose. Uh, and then from here, it's going to link into a copy of uh, Almirage and Almirage into Secure Garner. He's playing Almirage uh, for Maximus. Uh, starts with activates Invocation here, makes the Mechaba. So, pretty standard Invoke play so far. <clears throat> invocation grabs back uh, Alistair. And then he activates a Nadir Servant afterwards. So, that's a very powerful combo already. Nadir Servant is going to be able to send a copy of Aplone to the graveyard. Uh, to search a copy of Ecclesia, Aplon is, is going to trigger, adding him a copy of Shadal Schism. And then I believe he's going to go for Maximus here, so that's why he discards the Schism. Because uh, Maximus is... He knows, like, my extra deck is probably not going to have any, like, anti-Maximus targets. So Maximus is just so powerful here. And Maximus is going to be able to send uh, two cards from both of our extra decks. Um, I think I do make a little mistake here. I probably shouldn't have sent one of the monsters I'm sending. Yeah, I should have sent the Juju. I should have sent the Shen Shen. The reason I'm sending a virtual world name in the first place is to have an extra target for King Long uh, right away without having to like put anything in the graveyard. But Juju actually helps me break boards going second, so I should have just sent Shenzhen because like we're probably not we're not like trying to make Shenzhen going second unless we're like already breaking the board. So, anyways, he goes end phase set three uh, adds Fleur with off of Titanic Clad plus he has a Schism set up, so the, actually a very scary board for us to deal with because he has a Mechaba negate, a Fleur negate. At least a schism, and like who knows what else his back row is going to contain. So, at this point, I'm thinking, and this is where things get interesting. 
I get so excited that my camera, I slam the table and my camera uh, tips downwards. So this is really unfortunate because uh, I was, it was actually a really, really good, um, good like few sequences of, uh, of actions that I did. So unfortunately, uh, there, uh, I, it's just so bad because like I didn't, I didn't realize like for a while that I had knocked the camera over. So. Unfortunately, uh, by the time I realized, so much has already, like, finished. So I guess the best I can do is just try to explain what happened. So yeah, you can see the board we have here is uh, Fan Fan, Kazala, Troll, Me, M7, and a Break Sword. And you can see our opponent, opponent's field has a window, uh, plus a dimensional barrier in the graver, and a floor with the Mecha Bug on. So at this point, at this point, uh, things... So things, a lot has gone by. Uh, I'll pretty, much, I'll try to explain, but do my best to explain what happened. So when I was trying to play through the board, I believe I was able to trade with the Mechaba with like a Pancrotops or something. I had a Pancrotops in my hand. Um, I he activates Dimensional Barrier on my very first Synchro, so calling a Synchro. So I'm locked into XYZs only at this point. Uh, ultimately, we're able to make a bunch of XYZs because we have so many like virtual world names in our hand. We force out something with. Uh, with the fan fan, the flur, uh, flur negates the fan fan, and you can see you may be wondering like how am I supposed to something with the window on board? Well, that's because I had a forbidden chalice in my hand, which is why there's a four counter uh, on the window, which is actually gonna come up huge a little bit later on. But anyways, the gist of it is I'm making a bunch of extra Z's to force out his flur and uh, try to clear his entire board because the only, pretty much the only disruptions we're ending on at this point are, are gonna be like Zeus, Zeus and Gossip Shadow afterwards uh so yeah uh i believe i break sorted try to try to force something else out as well uh and and then at this point we're just uh, trying to enter battle phase just to attack his boards because his board's kind of sticky maximus is very big fleur is also big and ecclesia can't be destroyed by monsters plus some from the extra decks so it's actually pretty hard for me to clear his board but anyways uh resuming uh, what we do what footage we do have left uh, like I said, I'm entering battle phase. I choose to attack the Ecclesia just to make sure an XYZ battled. I crash the... I, I kill the Fleur first, and then I crash the Fan Fan with the window. And this is uh, the play... I really, really like this about Fan Fan. is because when it's destroyed by battle or card effect, I guess we'll summon two virtual worlds with different names. So it's from my... uh with, Sorry, the same type and attribute from my deck. And then from here, I'm just able to get another free XYZ, which is absolutely insane. Which is why I was mentioning the... The window being 2600 off a of chalice really does matter because fan fans 2600. Although I do make a mistake here, um, I wasn't counting the number of banish that I have. I only have three at this point, where I, I really want four because I want I need to pop the schism on this turn, um, but I didn't realize it at the time. So I guess kind of a big mistake on my part. Uh, we summon out the two uh, the two level threes. The only thing we only can make XYZ, so I make a bamboos and gossip shadow. From here afterwards, I make a Zeus. And like I said, it's just gonna be huge because I I don't want to Zeus away my own board, obviously, but I have to out the e the schism and the Maximus. Otherwise, either one's just gonna out my board uh, the next turn, and that was just a huge mistake on our part. I realize now that we have a Chuchi in the graveyard, and definitely should have just summoned a level six off of uh, Fan Fan instead of like the two level threes, and then Chuchi lowered the level just to get four banished. So that was a huge misplay on our part, and ult and actually was huge because we were pretty much able to break the entire board at this point. Chuche was supposed to pop both the Maximus and the Schism, for leaving us with a Gossip Shadow to stop his uh, Invoked play, and then a Zeus to stop his Extender. But unfortunately, uh, we just... Uh, yeah, it, it was just a, a heat of the moment thing. I was just so focused on like trying to break his board. I didn't re I didn't think about like uh, the implications of what we had to do uh, to make sure we maintained a, a board afterwards. As you're going to see here, it's going to end up mattering a lot. Because now the Schism is just going to out our Zeus because he just he just summons a Construct and the Schism effect sends the Zeus. And that leaves us with only a way to uh, to stop him with Gossip Shadow and that's kind of a huge problem. Uh, there's just not much we can really do to stop him. I decide not to Zeus away my own board uh, just because it forces him to out the Chuchi for next turn at the very least and the M7. Because the M7 is a very very uh, strong, strong follow up. Normal summons Alistair I believe yeah I have to Gossip Shadow here. But he changed in permanence, so his Alistair is resolving, and honestly, like I said, um, I I know I was saying before, like I was supposed to Chuche pop both, and then uh, 
Goss of Shadow stop his thing, but uh, he had an Imperm anyway, so I think his Alistair was resolving. It wasn't, I guess it really wasn't the end of the world, because technically the Zeus already traded with the Schism, so it's not that big of a deal. Although, like I said, if we were playing optimally, we definitely should have just, uh, should have just popped this, popped the Schism with the extra uh, Banish off of Chuche. But now he activates Invocation, uh, I believe he's going to try to summon a Raijin, because my, my graveyard is full of wind monsters. Uh, he does end up summoning Raijin, banishing our Nian Nian. He, he does give us the second uh, banish for our Chuche, but I think in the end, he he does this because he has a Cosmic Cycle in hand. Otherwise, like there's no reason for him to turn on my Chuche. Uh, like, why would you do that? It just gives me an extra way, a form of interruption uh, to disrupt my to disrupt him, so... Nah, he definitely uh, shouldn't, but... Um, but uh, the fact is... Uh, it's all, like I said, it's not gonna matter, because he has the Cosmic Cycle in hand, which he reveals later, but at the time, of course, I was a little, I was kind of excited, I was like, oh, my Chuche's lap again. I was thinking what I should pop, uh, I'm just gonna save it for, like, when he tries to go Battle Phase or whatever. But, I think we were discussing here if I could Nian Nian shuffle back his, uh, Alistair, but I couldn't because of Magical Meltdown, and that's something important to remember. I can't, you can't activate, like, those effects when the monster is summoned. He links two for Verte Anaconda, and from here, like, Obviously, I have to I have to shoot Jay, otherwise he's gonna make uh, Sure Phoenix Enforcer. He changed the Cosmic, like I said, and that's very very strong because uh, he just gets rid of my my Chuche and, and like you see at this point, both of my Chuches are gone. One's in the grave, one's banished. So we're actually in a very tight, like very poor spot here. Uh, he's able to bring out his uh, Sure Phoenix Enforcer, plus he has a Raijin, which is just honestly like what am I supposed to do at this point? You're also going to see that, uh, spoiler, uh, we are able to come back, but it is really an uphill battle because that dimensional barrier really turned off a lot of our ways to access follow-up with, like, Shen Shen. So he goes battle phase, um, remember, my guy's lo losing 400 because of a destroy Phoenix Enforcer's effect, that's why I could install a Ptolemy of 7 smaller. Um, he gets rid of the Anaconda and my Gossip Shadow attacks directly with 22. And then from here, I believe we know his hand is double Alistair. Because uh, he added one off of Meltdown previously, and he added one off of uh, Invocation. We draw for turn, um, and then from here, I believe we did draw for Grand Chalice. That was actually what helped us win the game, because from here, I'm able to Ching Long, target the Raijin to force e force out either DP or just trade with the Raijin. Um, I, and I think he decides to ultimately uh, let it go. I activate Lulu targeting the Ching Long. Uh, he, I think he's going to chain Destroy Phoenix to force, so he kind of has to. Otherwise, the Lulu just gets me so much more uh, advantage. You can't really allow that. Uh, we can see, though, I showed the camera the Chalice that we drew for turn. Chalice was absolutely huge. We're able to trade with the Destroy Phoenix Enforcer. And honestly, at this point, um, I think we're just in the driver's seat. Um, we search a Lala. Lala is able to target our spell, dumping a 2 2, bringing back the GG. And Yan Yan comes back since we summoned a level 3. And then from here, uh, I, like I said, we just have free, we just have complete control of the game because both of his interruptions are used up. We know his hand is double Alistair, so we're essentially thinking of a way to try to kill him this turn. Uh, otherwise, the Celestial follow-up is just going to be too insane. We were not able to stop that since we uh, went through our fan fan already. I believe I'm going to try to synchro or no. I'm, I'm thinking I'm thinking really hard about this play because, like I like I said, um, he has double Alistair in hand, so that makes killing him kind of difficult. But I think in the end we figure it out. We go for uh, Utopia Beyond, and Utopia Beyond actually comes up huge here because his monsters become uh, less, both zero attack, and then even with the, through the double Alistair, uh, it's not enough because I believe uh, we were able to uh, do some damage beforehand, even uh, after he paid with Anaconda. So we actually managed to take that down somehow. Like our opponent set up an insane board go turn one, but somehow we're able to take that down and. Uh, before we end off, guys, I just want to apologize once again for the poor camera angle. I didn't realize that, uh, that, like, <clears throat> moving the table actually shook the camera that much. So, once again, I do apologize. But if you guys like this type of content, be sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe. And with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys soon. Take care.